everybody. Welcome to CSE's Green Table Talks, the holiday edition. Listen, we know how important the holidays are to everyone because they're very important to Dr. Rhonda and myself. And we find ourselves in the midst of a pandemic. So there's some adjustments we have to make. And we're here to talk to you over the next four, four weeks um, about spending in the midst of a pandemic. So this is the pandemic Christmas 2020 edition. We're gonna help you realign your finances with your values. So welcome into the Zoom room space with Dr. Rhonda Anderson and myself, Deirdre Cox, president and founder of CSE. Dr. Rhonda, ho, 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 and Merry Christmas. Merry How are you doing? Christmas. I'm doing well. And I think this is an awesome idea for us to put on the hats. At first I was like, oh Lord, Deirdre wants us to wear these hats, but. <laughs> It makes it very festive. So thank you so much for the idea. And I hope everybody out in our Green Table Talk audience land, that you guys are doing well. And um, we send our prayers and thoughts to you guys because we're thinking of you. We were thinking of you when we decided to do this Table Talk because we know that the holidays are upon us. And you know, most times we stress out about the holidays, even not being in a pandemic. So it's a stressful situation even prior to the pandemic. But now I'm sure that with people losing their jobs, um, people not knowing, you know, if they still have a job, they don't think they don't have the finances to splurge, you know, so that's added pressure. But I was watching a movie the other night and I've always known this all my life, but it's always a good reminder when someone else says it to you, it just like goes off the light bulb. It's like, um, you know, it goes off when you hear something over and over again. And I'm gonna tell you guys the name of the movie I saw it on Netflix. It was called The App That Stole Christmas. And so one of the quotes out of that movie, uh -huh, the app that stole Christmas, I try to watch my Christmas movies, you know, because I like to be able to talk about the Christmas movies when people start talking about them, you know, amongst women, it's a popular thing. Um, so I've been kind of watching them, you know, as I can, and some of them good, some are not so good, but this one was pretty interesting. So it was called the app that stole Christmas. And one quote that stood out to me was, it's about your presence not presents. So I want you to kind of take that mm, and do on that, like you that. know, as we go into the holiday season, because it really literally is a blessing to still be present right now during this pandemic. So, you know, don't take it lightly. And it's really not about the money that you spend on people. It, people really yeah. want to see people happy, you know, and, and just enjoy the season, you know, enjoy some food together over Zoom or commune with your family if you can, you know, but it's really all about that. So with that being said, we're going to get started. Um, so first, we're going to be talking about values and money, right? So I'm going to give you guys just a little brief definition about values. I mean, you can always Google stuff and stuff's very, information is readily available, but values are um, our individual um, beliefs that motivate us to act one way or another. So I consider values to be like our internal GPS. I love using GPS. It's a great example for a lot of life lessons, right? The GPS. So I call it our internal GPS because it guides our decision-making values. They guide our decision-making. They even guide our behavior, you know? And normally we've been taught these things, right? Because so, life is a journey, right? You were a child. So you were taught values from your parents or from the person who raised you. You, once you started making friends, you start seeing things and formulating values all over again. Some may have competed with what your parents told you, but they were still values being formed. Then it's the world, right? We get to grow up and go out into the world and have experiences. So it could have been a value from a colleague. It could have been a vacation experience. It could have been a church experience that have really had an impact on your values. So just to share a couple of examples, right? Um, of what values are. So one is integrity, one is success, joy, love, kindness, security, right? So I just kind of mostly labeled out most of my values, but my top three um, that I have to really guide me on a daily basis, 365, you know, you can tell where I'm going most of the time. If you know me, you know me, right? So my top three values are um, integrity, kindness and security. Those are the three things that really motivate me most of all. I have a ton of other values that I've learned, you know, in life, but those are my top three. So Deirdre, what are your top three? So um, God, my spirituality, 
um, is very important to me. Integrity, family, and security. Yes. Yes. And I did forget, and I shouldn't have forgotten to mention God, but hey, in order for you to have a kind heart, most times it comes from being a believer. Being a believer can really <laughs> impact kindness. So <laughs> I'll say that. But yes, um, my values as far as my religion and relationship with Christ is, re is very important to me as well. Um, so, you know, with that being said, we're going to um, transition right into your wants versus your needs, right? Because believe it or not, our values um, guide our what we believe are our needs and our wants, right? So our needs are things that we can't live without day-to-day -day. we have to live to we we need these things to survive basically so it's food it's shelter it's water it's clothing right we have to have these things in order to survive to survive so they are a need a necessity um so a want is a desire it's something that you do not have to have right on a daily basis you can live without that want um, it's, is one, sometimes it's, it's a, it, 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 they really are budget busters. You know, wants can be a budget buster, right? They can bust your budget because some people are impulsive. They'll go out and just get what they want all the time and it, it impacts financial goals. So when I say a desire, it could be your nails. It could be, that was one of mine until this pandemic. I hadn't gone to get my nails done since March. What about you, Deirdre? Uh, <laughs> right. So I value my life over getting my nails done. You know, it could be yeah. the hair weaves. I mean, I can't believe what some people spend on hair weaves. It is an astronomical value for us to look beautiful um, and well put together people. <laughs> I mean, I've seen where some people are spending $400 on a bundle of hair um, and they do that time and time again. Do we need the bundles? No, I think we you can survive without the bundle. Right, Deirdre? <laughs> one unit that's all you need. <laughs> that's right economical <laughs> right right um so you know it, it it we have to define what those things are and i still you know will say that the values they determine what you feel are important to you and um you know and sometimes i feel like when it comes to wants Sometimes people have to have them right away. And I feel like we have to kind of um, reason with ourselves with where we are financially. So Deirdre, how do you deal with getting the things that you want that aren't necessarily in your budget at the time? How do you deal with that? So, you know, immediate gratification is something that I dealt with a long time ago because it's, it's not that, you know, the things that you want I come from a hardworking family, so I recognize that I've got to work hard. And because security is important to me, and when I had children at home, because my kids are grown now, but when my kids were at home, it was it was more important for me to have a roof over our head, mm -hmm. for us to have the food that we needed to be healthy, not necessarily the food we wanted. So I dealt with immediate gratification early in life and my need to feel secure, um, my family and, and my integrity. Because what I see is I, when, whenever I would try to meet my, my needs versus my wants, my, my wants versus my needs, I was out of integrity with myself and with my family because I was taking something away from them that they needed so that they could be, they could feel secure. So that was selfishness on my part. So I've dealt with that and had that conversation. You know, therapy is a good thing because I learned a lot of that in therapy too. But then also having family members that taught me those things. Wow, that was a great answer. I appreciate that. And, you know, there are ways to deal with the things that we want, you know, um, we have to get out of that mentality that I have to have gratification immediately, right? Because it's not going to kill you to wait three months to buy a bundle, you know, because you're setting aside certain amounts of money to get the bundle, because there's nothing wrong with having wants and trying to get those things that you want. There's nothing wrong with it. But like Deirdre said, you have to have integrity about it. You know, you have to kind of understand what your needs are versus the wants and what's going to come first. And sometimes people make a mistake by putting the needs um, last or they'll feel like, oh, I can borrow the money from a friend because I've spent my money on the want. My friend will have my need. And that's an incorrect way to think about your needs versus your wants. So how your Absolutely. value. 
Huh? Uh, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I heard Deirdre say absolutely, you know, um, and me and her, we've had to deal with certain family members at any given time and giving that lesson. And it's a hard lesson to give because sometimes it's your kids, sometimes it's a cousin, sometimes it's even an aunt, someone who's older than you, you know, you have to give that lesson to um, because it's not fair to the other person involved. Um, so, so we'll go on with that. <laughs> So now we're going to transition into how your values determine your net worth, how your values determine your net worth. And I love how Deirdre makes it a point to tell people your net worth, your network determines your net worth. And certainly values play a whole big key into you getting to what it is that your net worth, that, well, getting to the net worth that you want. I'll say that. Um, and so for me, it goes back to um, valuing security, you know, to, to get more in net worth, valuing um, success, you know, determination. It takes a lot of determination and valuing self-motivation to determine, well, to get to your net worth. And those are values clumped together, right? You have to value all of those things. And there are so many others, because I'm going to ask Ms. Cox here, like, what is she, what does she think determine, you know, how do values determine your net worth? Like, what is her spin on it? But for me, it's about determination and motivation, integrity, security, all of those things. You have to value those things in order to increase your net worth. So when I think about net worth, you know, I think about what you owe versus versus the value of something, right? Mm -hmm. So when I think of net worth and I think of how your values should determine your net worth, if, if owning property that you can pass on to your children, if owning a business, owning it outright, meaning you owe no loans against it, no liens. So, so you owe these things, you own them free and clear. If security is a value for me, if family is a value for me and, and I'm, I'm building wealth because I wanna be able to pass it on to my family or I'm building wealth because I wanna be able to put it back into the community and support people in accomplishing their goals. That's how your values determine your net worth because your values keep you on point. They keep you goal driven. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not just the goal, but it's accomplishing the goal. So that's what that means to me. Yeah. All right, love it. So now we're gonna transition to the next slide and Ms. Cox is gonna take over um, the Zoom room. So take it away, Ms. Cox. Awesome. So we're going to talk about goals and money. And again, you know, and talking about your, your, your values. So values guide your goals, right? And, and your goals determine the money that you will end up amassing, you know, building over a period of time. So what kind of future do you want? You know, Dr. Rhonda is, is wonderful at putting together and coaching people through vision boarding, literally putting your vision on paper. When you have a vision for your life that is surrounded and wrapped up in values, security, um, kindness, family, God, integrity, guess what? Those goals are probably going to be goals that are going to not just bless you, but others, because it's not just about us individually in this world, right? So what kind of future do you want? And what, what is money gonna, what money do you need to help you get there? And how are you gonna manage the money by way of your values to get there? Um, you know, what are your hopes and dreams? And Dr. Rhonda, I'm gonna throw this out at you. You've got a family, you've got children, you've got a husband. What are some of your hopes and dreams? And how do your values wrap, how, how are you wrapping your values up in those? Well, a lot of our hopes, um, they, they're really geared towards ensuring that we can, one, go back and implement some things that we probably didn't implement in our younger age as our sons, right? So we really pride ourselves on really giving them a lot of information up front as far as being a homeowner, um, saving in your 401k IRAs, you know, just a lot of sound advice, thinking about becoming a real estate investor. Um, so we have sons and my husband always says we're raising men, not boys. And so when I think about we're raising men, not boys, we want to ensure that the men that we released into the environment, they come from us, right? So we want to ensure that they are being very responsible because they're going to find a wife one day, right? That's going to need to feel secure. You know, most times men, they marry their mother a lot of times. <laughs> and so if she's anything like me, she's going to value security. And so we want to ensure that we set our children up for success in that manner. 
you know, um, teaching them about stocks, you know, and investing, you know, this was one of the things that they decided to do during the pandemic, you know, um, they've already started, you know, investing in stocks and they talk about it religiously. So for us, you know, our hope is that we one, you know, produce um, highly competent young men who are very responsible about what they do in their households once they become homeowners. Um, two, you know, we want to make sure that we're always exposing them to a lot of the things that we didn't get exposed to so that they can make better decisions sooner because there's nothing in a book that, that doesn't say that your, your, your 22 year old can't be a homeowner time they graduate out of college. They can be if we set them up to do that, you know. Um, and so that that's one part of it. And then another part of it is for us to get really financially um, free to do like a lot of giving back, you know, because like you said, Deirdre, we're, it's not just for us. Um, we value home ownership, right? And I am a licensed real estate agent and I see it all the time. I have people who come to me, hey, I want to buy a house. We go to the, um, to the, to get the pre-approval. Right, and it they they were thinking I'm 250 or higher, but it come back at 175, 180. So that's a that's a that's a hard hit to the ego, right? And when we go out here to look at homes in that price range, a lot of them need a lot of work. So we value home ownership and affordable home ownership at that. So another dream of ours is to you know be that provider for people um, for affordable housing, you know because you know, look at the, the economy now, people are going to need affordable homes, you know, that they can live in, you know, and then our hearts is where, you know, I feel like everybody should live decently, no matter what, you know, I don't care if you got a house that's 125 <laughs> or a house that's 285, right? When I walk into your $125,000 or 150, you know, home, it should be a decent home for you and your family, right? Nothing where the roof is caved in or there are holes in it. You can't, it's not livable, right? We feel that nobody deserves to do that. And we feel like there's a way for us to make that happen. And so James and I, you know, that's one of our dreams. We're working towards that right now. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a family oriented dream that I have, you know, um, and, and I'm just super excited about our future, you know? And we want to leave an inheritance for our, our grandkids and our kids. So, see that those are values. Those are values that 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 create legacies. So, so let's talk a little bit about that. And 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 I know we're going to move on pretty quickly here. But you know, we want everybody to understand what Dr. Rhonda and I just talked about. What she just shared, her family's goals and dreams, their hopes and dreams. Those hopes and dreams are wrapped. There's goals wrapped around those hopes and dreams. So when you hope for something and you dream for something, you know what the details are around that something, how much that something costs, mm -hmm. what your income is, how much you need to save to accomplish that something. And then what values do you need to instill in your family so that everybody's moving in the same general direction? Nothing's worse than having goals as a parent and everybody else in your household is doing this. Everybody's going in a different direction. So then the goals cannot be accomplished. So what we want to leave you with on this slide right here is make sure that the hopes and dreams you have, make sure they're realistic and make sure everybody in your household is on board. So everybody's moving forward. Okay, yes. moving forward. Yes. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Yes. And we can go to the next slide, Dr. Rhonda. This is your slide. You know, and I forget that I'm the driver. Usually you're the driver. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now we're going to discuss external influences that impact your financial choices. And man, I was like, you know, and it's even more like there's so many more external influences these days than there were when me and um, Ms. Cox were coming up, right? Um, so, you know, now people have to deal with the Instagram models and, you know, the, I mean, it's a lot of stuff The you know, them getting the body parts, right. Or, you know, flexing in their Maseratis at a young age. And it, it has really distorted um, people's thinking, right. As far as what they should be doing with their money. And, you know, it's, it's also depressing, right. Um, so, you know, we have to watch that and monitor that stuff because it's all an advertisement that Instagram model probably, you know, is just flexing in front of somebody else's Maserati. It's probably not theirs. Um, somebody probably gifted them 
the surgery that they had to enhance their body part because they are an influencer, right? <laughs> so they're selling surgery, right? <laughs> it's a job, right? <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of other things that happen behind the scenes that, you know, we as people aren't seeing, you know? And so these external influences, they impact our finances, um, whether we want to admit it or not, you know, and we just need to come clean and say, okay, yes, I am allowing those things to impact me. And yes, I am being coerced to spend my money a certain way so that you could get past it and get over it, right? And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Because in, um, advertisers, they're trying to make money. You know, they're trying to make money or on the influence, uh, well, coming from an influencer, they're trying to get free stuff, right? Or get paid to market somebody else's stuff. So, you know, you want to just kind of um, manage that and, and still classify those things as a need versus a want. Is it something I need to save for? Because the impulse shopping is, is real. The impulse purchasing is real and it hurts a lot of households on a daily basis. And we have to be mindful of that. You know, do I need to take a pause? You know, do I need to think about it or talk about it with an accountability partner, you know, so that I can get someone else's feedback as the does this purchase make sense, right? Um, so, you know, the advertisements that you see, the social media, media in general, celebrities, they do a doozy on us, right? Because they're famous, they had the income. Even if they had to buy it, they have the income to buy it, but most times it's free to them. <laughs> so they're not paying anything for a lot of the stuff you're seeing. Um, mm -hmm. Peers, family members, and friends, you know, don't allow needing to compete with your family members and your peers and your friends drive you into trying to, you know, the old saying is keep up with the Joneses. Don't allow that to do that to you. Um, you know, and, and everybody does things in different phases and, you know, it might be that I need to save for that BMW or I might need to, you know, I want red bottoms. Deirdre already knows, right? I want some red bottoms, right? <laughs> I really want those shoes. It's a, it's a want, but, you know, I know that my time will come to get the red bottoms. My motto is I got to have that kind of cash in my purse before I buy the red bottoms on a daily basis. Because those shoes are about $700 or more. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still guilty of wanting them. So <laughs> okay. Okay. you're guilty. You haven't done it yet, right? <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I'm guilty. Um, so, you know, we really have to watch that. And so we really need to think of our, our influences. Are they being productive or unproductive, right? So productive influences, they are still allowing me to reach my financial goals, whatever it is I'm trying to save for. Am I covering my needs properly? You know, am I setting myself up for success later with investments, right? So make sure that whatever you're being influenced by, because there are good influences in media and there are bad influences in media. And so there are people out there who are talking about investments and IRAs and things like that. So that's good. That's productivity right there when you're doing something different, you know, as far as savings, investing, right? That's good productivity because it helps you in the long run. But when it becomes unproductive real fast, when you know you want the body of this Instagram model and her butt costs $10,000 or $20,000, you know, and you trying to figure out how am I going to get that money, you know, to get the same butt, you know, so, um, or, buy the, or buy the clothes, right? Let me go back to the clothes. But like I said, you know, the pressures are very different, you know, from them, from what we had growing up. And, you know, I see my nieces going through it and my nephews, and I'm like, I have to talk them down off the ledge sometimes. Like, hey, don't do that. You know, you don't have the money to do that. Let's go save for it. If you want the butt, save for the butt, you know, don't just go broke trying to get the butt. But anyway, um, so, you know, um, so how do, well, I'm going to toss a question over to Ms. Cox. So um, how do you deal with the external influences? Well, you know, we talked about me being a spiritual walker. So it's, it's again, it's, it's values based, right? So I can't get caught up in the media because that's not me. Mm -hmm. uh, can't get caught up in the advertisements. My, my peers and family and friends, I'm not going to enable anybody in my family or in my circle of influence. So I'm not going to be impacted by them because at the end of the day, when I take on that debt, they are not going to pay it for me. Right. 
So I have to always be looking at whether or not what I'm about to do is productive or unproductive. Because again, remember, my family is important to me and establishing and creating a legacy for my family are important. So that, that's how I balance that out. Okay, awesome. So now I'm going to drive to the next slide and Ms. Cox is going to take over. Yes, and thank you. I appreciate you driving. So staying focused on finances during the holidays, this can be such an emotional time. And because we're in the midst of a pandemic, it's it's twice as, as, as emotional. So you've got to really manage that. That's why here at CSE, we're really focused on the mental health aspect. So I encourage you guys, anybody out there, if you're currently working and you have an EAP and employee assistance program, please, if you feel that you're about to get carried away emotionally, because of, of, of COVID and, and the pandemic, and, and you're going to go out on a spending spree, please curtail that. Talk to somebody. Get an accountability partner. So here's some strategies for staying focused on your financial goals. Set some goals. <laughs> That's first. Set some goals. Identify your values. Identify three values that you can live with, and then build some financial goals. Have goals for 2021. 12 months worth of goals. What do those goals look like? And then how about this one? Establish an attitude of gratitude. Be grateful for where you are. Be grateful for living the vertical life, not the horizontal one, because we're still here. Be grateful for what you have versus looking for more. Can I tell you that a poverty mentality will have you on vapors and you're always looking for more, 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 as opposed to looking at what you have and saying, I'm grateful for this because this doesn't have to be. And then where are you with your holiday pre, with your holiday pre spending budget? So you have to have a budget right now before the holidays come. So that as the holidays come upon you, you can take a look at where you are. Are you over your budget? Are you within your budget? Do you have additional resources that you can utilize to actually spend for Christmas? That's important, be real with yourself. Take an in-depth look at your wants versus your needs. What do you want versus what you need? And what are your children or family members? What do they need versus what they want? And then envision yourself where, envision seeing yourself where you're gonna be financially after the holidays. Where do you wanna be? Do you wanna be stressed out because you've got bills? You got more month than money? Mm -hmm. Or do you wanna be in a position where you've not taken on any new debt and everybody was still happy at the end of the holiday season? And there's, there's a, 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 a gift that we're gonna to give to you and we're gonna make it available to you in the, um, the, the not the link, but in the actual um, social media post, but it's a financial first aid booklet. Peach State Federal Credit Union is our partner on this amazing CSEG uh, Green Table Talk Holiday Edition. So we're gonna make that available to you guys in the um, social media link page. So we'll go to the next slide, please, Dr. Rund. And I think we're winding up here, aren't we? Yes. So you wanna calculate the days and hours um, the items actually cost, right? Um, because um, it, it's not about just dollars and cents, right? It's about the hours it takes for you to earn that money <laughs> to pay for an item. So you want to quantify your purchases in terms of a of in terms of a very valuable thing. Your time, right? Your time goes into that. And I hear people all the time. I got to work overtime to do X, Y, Z, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, but do you have time to work overtime just uh -huh. to make Christmas happen? Um, take, um, sorry, think about your hourly wage and how much you make, um, you know, and, and sometimes there's a lot of other variables that go into that as well, you know, cause you still gotta think about your needs that you have to take care of. Um, divide the cost of an item by your hourly wage. The cost of an item divided by your hourly wage will equal the hours you will have to pay for that particular item. So be mindful about how you spend your time. And a quick tip, hey, you know, I've already started talking to my family about it already. You know, we're gonna do Christmas on a, on a smaller scale. You know, normally, you know, we give a certain amount of money. Well, this year it's not gonna be that amount, it's gonna be this amount. And so you start talking to people early or I'm gonna bake some cookies, you know, for my family. They can get very creative, right, Ms. Cox? Oh, absolutely. And the good thing is, is we're going to have Peach State in the space with us um, over the next few sessions. And they're going to be bringing you some DIY tips, some do-it-yourself tips for, for decorating your house, for gifts, for your family members, so that you don't have to go out and spend money that you don't have. Because mm -hmm. we're not doing that. That's not what we're doing. No. And, and this is a time for us to, start, to keep a lot of our dollars 
on hand in our savings account, in our banking account, or investing, or whatever we're doing to, to secure our financial future, because, you know, still some uncertain things going on with the pandemic. I mean, the pandemic is still here. It hasn't left us, and I mean, we hear people all the time, business clients, we're going to wait until after the pandemic. Well, we don't think the pandemic is going anywhere for a couple of years, and so you need to be you know, mindful about how you spend your dollars. So in Christmas, you got another year next year, you might be in a better financial situation next year. And if, you know, Christmas is all about dollars and how many gifts you give someone, you really need to go back and marinate personally on what the real reason for Christmas is. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to your values. Yep. Mm -hmm. And what's important. So I think we have uh, successfully reached the end of our green table talk number one the holiday edition merry christmas we will see you guys in the space so stay tuned for webinar two webinar three and webinar four can't wait because we're going to have peach state credit union in the house and they're going to share some amazing tools with you again diy and how not to become hung over by debt by the end of christmas so thanks for joining us dr Rhonda. as always you're a superstar thank you appreciate thank everybody you. bye bye Thank you.